Hello everybody. After uh, seeing the properties of DTFT, we shall now see the problems on uh, the discrete time Fourier transforms. Now, in the first problem, uh, x of n is given. X of n is a discrete time signal, which is non-periodic in nature. Okay, so that signal is given. For that signal, we need to be finding out the DTFT. That means the time domain signal is given. We need to find out the frequency domain signal. Okay, so what is this signal? Understand the signal. This is positive time exponential. Can we call this? This is exponential, isn't it? And this exponential is extending from zero to infinity. And they are saying that this alpha is less than one. Okay, so we need to be drawing the spectrum also, the magnitude spectrum. So since they are asking us to find out the DTFT, this is the equation for DTFT. Okay, so that is x of e part g omega. So this omega is the uh, frequency. Fine. So this is the frequency domain equation. So this is the spectrum of x of here. Understand? Now, just if if you just compare this with the z transform equation, it's very similar to that. How it is similar, how we used to have Z transform, it's X of Z equal to summation N ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity X of N, E power, sorry, it's not E power, it's Z power minus N. So that means in place of Z, we now we have E power J omega. See, in place of Z, we have E power J omega. So that is Z to the power minus. Understand? This is uh, what is understandable. Fine. So you have to remember the equation, okay? By remembering the equation of the set, so it's much easier than. And now let's submit the signal x of n here. Fine. Now uh, since u of n is there, uh, this summation is ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity, okay? Would now become what? This is one from where to where? This is one from zero to infinity. So when this n becomes zero to infinity, this u of n would become one. That is what is shown. So u of n is minus because it has become one. So you're left with alpha par n and e par minus j omega n. And both these uh, terms have uh, n as the power. Okay. Take that n common. Fine. So you have this. Now this is a standard summation which we have been seeing from uh, so many days. Fine. Now. That is this, this is a standard summation, okay? And j is, when e is less than one, this is one by one minus a. And it's very clearly told in the problem that this alpha is less than one, okay? And this exponential would also be less than one. So the uh, product of this would also be less than one. So we can write this as one by one minus alpha into e part minus j omega. Now, we, we have to draw this magnitude spectrum for this temporal. Okay, so how to draw the magnitude spectrum? See here, yeah, we we'll just take this. Understand, the signal that we have considered is a discrete time, non-periodic signal. Discrete time was the signal, X of N was what we had considered. But see the magnitude spectra is continuous in time. Okay, so this is something that we need to remember. So the spectra, the magnitude spectra, okay, would come as a continuous time signal. Okay, and they had told alpha is less than one. Fine. When alpha is less than one, it can be zero to one, or it can even be minus one to zero. Understand because it's less than one, it's, it's told that alpha is less than one. So when alpha is from zero to one, it is positive. Understand that? So when alpha is positive, what would happen? This would go one, okay? So this would still be one by one minus alpha. So this is the maximum you have. What would be the minimum? It would be one by one plus alpha. Understand? And when would when would you have that? When would you have that? When would this become plus? When this is when alpha is minus, this would become that is the minimum that you would hit. The maximum is 
1 by 1 minus alpha. So this is the threat. When it is from minus 1 to 0, this is what it will get, the shifted signal. Understand? So this is the uh, magnitude spectra. Just, uh, just see this and see how it works for uh, these values of alpha and draw that. Right. Now, let's move on to the next problem. That is this signal, X of N, which, is, which has got six samples here. Sorry, five samples. Fine. Now, just uh, for uh, the information, can you tell me what type of signal is this? Is it possible to say this is a discrete signal? Is it even signal or odd signal? Is the question. No, that has got nothing to do here, but still, can, can you just say seeing this? Yeah, see here, this is three, this is three, this is one, this is one. So there is a symmetry. Okay, so this is an even signal. And how this even signal is that this way? What is this five? So this five is n is equal to zero sample. So what is the range of this signal? So n is equal, this is n is equal to zero, this is n is equal to minus one, n is equal to minus two. So it's n equal to minus two to two is the range. Understand that? So for such a signal, we need to be finding out the spectrum is what is said. And after that, after that, after finding the spectrum that is DTFT, we need to evaluate what is the spectrum at omega equal to zero. Just evaluate, just after finding out x e power j omega, see what is that x e power j omega, omega equal to zero, is what they have asked to do. So let's see how to do that. So again, we have considered uh, the equation for DTFT, okay, in frequency domain. Fine, just expand this. So this is done by expansion. Okay, so this there is there is the negative uh, side, there is the positive side also. That means the uh, left sided sequence and this is right sided sequence. So this is both sided sequence. And we have very clearly seen when we were uh, uh, dealing with uh, the expansion of this. Expansion of this. See, when we expand the summation, okay, x of zero, the zero at sample, if you take, uh, fine, n would be zero, so this would become one. So x of zero would be here. So when n is equal to one, you this n would be one. So it, it would be e power minus j omega. Understand that? So that means with all positive values of n, you will have negative exponentials associated. Similarly, for all negative values of n, you will have positive exponentials associated. So this is something that we've seen earlier also when we were dealing with the z transform problems. Now. What is this x of minus 2? x of minus 2 is 1. x of minus 1 is 3. Okay? Just substitute those values. Understand? Now, this is your x e bar j omega. Understand? That's just, this is just 5 sample uh, signal. So, this is how uh, it's been dealt with. And how did they come up with cos omega and cos 2 omega, see here in these exponentials, in the e power j omega you have, and you have e power minus j omega, just keep 3 out and deal with these two. So what is e power j omega plus e power minus j omega? It would be 2 cos e power, 2 cos j omega. So, it, so 3 is there, so it's 3 into 2 cos j omega. So that would be uh, 6 cos omega. J would not come when you deal with that. Okay. J would uh, not be there, but when you expand this, it, J would J term would come. Similarly, what is how, how will they have written cos two omega here? There is this exponential term, these two exponential term, e power J two omega, e power minus J two omega. So e power J two omega plus e power minus J two omega would uh, uh, give us uh, two cos 2 omega. So that is this 2 cos 2 omega. And where is this 5? This 5 has some here. Is that okay? So this is how uh, the problem is dealt with. Now this is not over at. What they ask us to do? They ask us to find out the spectrum or DTFT at omega equal to 0. So if you just substitute omega equal to 0 cos omega is anyways 1. Okay, so this would also be 1. So we'll be having 5 plus 6 plus 2. See here? 
So this is what is uh, the spectrum at omega equal to zero. Understand? Now let's move on to the next problem. Okay. So wherein they are, they have asked us to find out the d t of t of the delta of them. Right. So let's see that we have uh, x of e per term again the equation for uh, the spectrum. Okay. So just substitute delta of n. Fine. What is delta of n? Delta of n is zero for all n not equal to zero, and it it is one. In discrete time, it is one. In continuous time, this is unbounded at n equal to zero. We should remember delta of n and delta of t. What is the difference? Delta of t is in continuous time. Delta of n is in uh, discrete time. In discrete time, this is one at n equal to zero. In continuous time, this is delta of t is what uh, t equal to zero is something that is unbounded. Fine. Now. See, since this exists only at n equal to zero, okay, at n equal to zero, this is one delta of zero, and this would be e bar zero. So you have just one sample. So this summation would uh, not be required actually because you have just one sample from minus infinity to plus infinity. So you're not there. There are there's just one no more than uh, one sample. Okay, so you have one sample at n equal to zero. That is delta of zero. And what is delta of zero? Delta of zero means see here, delta of zero is one, and it is e power zero. That is also one. So the dt of the delta of n is also one, as it was the case in z transforms. Z transform delta of n is also one. Okay, so this is how uh, it is dealt with. And what is the spectrum of that? How to draw the spectrum? This is one. Just draw it okay this is one draw it. from where to where it's from minus infinity to plus infinity fine right now show that the dtft of x of n equal to one okay which is one from minus infinity to plus infinity so this is a signal which is one from minus infinity to plus infinity and the spectrum of this is given by this. So they, have, they already have given us the spectrum. Understand that? Okay, so they have given us the spectrum and they are asking us prove that the spectrum, the dt of t of x of n is this. Let's see how they deal with this problem. So they have just plotted this spectrum first for simplicity. Okay, because it would be easier to uh, plot this. Uh, it would be easier to solve the problem by seeing this plot or the sketch. Okay, so what is the sketch telling? Now see here, this is delta function. This again is delta. Okay, this is delta of omega. This is this isn't uh, frequency domain. That's why it is omega. It's not n, mind you. This is omega. Fine. So at omega equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we get. Fine. Now, when you have this k, what is this k? K is some integer. Okay. So at every integer multiple of 2 pi, you have this uh, delta function. And what is the amplitude of that delta function? See, this is the amplitude of the delta function or the unit impulse function. Okay. So this is the amplitude. So all the samples would have this amplitude. Fine. So what you would have have is at omega equal to zero, you would just have this. At omega equal to two pi, okay, you would have this. At omega equal to four pi, that means this k when k is one, it is at two pi. At omega equal to two. when k is equal to two, it is at omega equal to four pi. This is how it is uh, going. Understand that? Fine. So this is how the spectrum is uh, plotted. Now, now see here, we shall, this, this, we, we are trying to do inverse DTFT. That means what we will do, uh, we will we'll start with this, we will get this. So what they have asked us is to prove that this DTFT of this is this, but when we are proving that, let's start from this equation is what they're saying. 
Okay, so we have to bring this equation here in place of x of e power g omega. Fine, we are trying to do it by inverse dtft. So since we are doing it by inverse dtft, okay, I'm not having the equation for this. I'm having the equation for x of n. And see, this x of n, when the equation for x of n, where this moving? This is moving from minus pi to plus pi. Okay, so this is where where is minus pi to plus pi means so it is somewhere here minus pi to plus pi this this x of e power j omega what you have sketched okay uh, in this we have multiple samples but it's in this equation which is the sample or which they are trying to uh, integrate they are trying to integrate over this period this is minus pi from here to plus pi so from minus pi to plus to plus pi okay you just have one sample of amplitude 2 pi okay so that needs to be understood fine what we've done here we've just substituted this equation in the place of x e part j omega okay understand this from this sketch whatever we have sketched there it is understandable that this whole part or the term would become 2 pi why is that see here see here this is being evaluated over the range minus pi to pi okay where is minus pi to pi this is minus 2 pi this is 2 pi so minus pi to pi comes exactly at the center between the, these two samples and at again center at these two samples so from here to here is what minus pi to pi so this is where uh, the x of n is being evaluated so what would happen you would just get one sample so this whole thing would become 2 pi because we are evaluating it at omega equal to minus pi to pi. Understand that this whole, this, this, this part would become 2 pi. And this is 2 pi where? This is 2 pi where? This is 2 pi at omega equal to 0. See here? This is 2 pi at omega equal to 0. From minus pi to pi is where we are evaluating. But it is 2 pi at omega equal to 0 understand that so what would happen how would this equation look like now x of n is 1 by 2 is anyways there so this part would become 2 pi and that is 2 pi at omega equal to 0 so that's why this 2 pi 2 pi goes off okay and e power j since this e power 0 okay so it would become 1 so when we start seeing the um, inverse dtft of this okay we're getting that to be one understand that is how we prove that the dt of t of this is this okay we, we started it from x of n okay in x of n when we substitute this we're getting our x of n to be one fine so this is how the things are told here just remember this okay if it is one it is this Okay, now let's move on to the next signal. Let us find the DTFT of the signal, which is x of n equal to minus 1 to the power n, u of n. Fine. This again is a a power n, u of n uh, uh, types. a power n, u of n types. Fine. Now, this is the DTFT equation. After substituting x of n, this is how it looks like. Fine. Now uh, u of n is 1 from 0 to infinity. That's why it is substituted as 1 here. And this is changed from 0 to infinity. Okay. Just club these two because there is a power n, there is a power n. Since this is minus 1, I, I need to take care of that. That minus is minus 1 into e power minus j omega to the power n. So this is how it looks like. This is in standard form which standard form is this you all you all understand that it's one by one minus this one by one minus this since this, there is already a minus minus of minus so it would become one by one plus e power minus suppose uh, you have to express this in terms of sinusoidals how we can do that is, is it possible to express this in terms of sinusoidals yes so this is how they have done how they have done this so here we have we need to have one means these two if you multiply you will get one this is minus j this is plus j 
okay so these two if you club uh, you would get one here these two if you club you would get e bar minus j omega just understand me. okay now how can i express this how can i express this in terms of uh, uh, this sign is already what is this this is if there if there is two here in the denominator it is cos omega by two since there is no two here in the denominator that two needs to be taken uh, composite how it's two cos omega by two this is this part okay that's why it is written as two cos omega by two this part and this since this is minus here this would go and sit in the in the numerator and it would become e bar j omega by two. So that is what is done. You could have stopped here. That was sufficient. You could have stopped here, but uh, if if you are asked to uh, express that in terms of sinusoidal, you can you can just uh, do this. Fine. Otherwise, this answer is uh, good. Okay. So let's move on with the last problem uh, for this session okay that's x of n u of n minus u of n minus 6 so what is the range of this what is the range of this see u of n ranges from 0 to inf infinity u of n minus 6 ranges from 6 to infinity so u of n minus u of n minus 6 ranges from 0 to 5 okay see ya. you have x of n just substitute this here you have uh, the signal ranging from 0 to 5. So this signal is 1 from 0 to 5. So it looks like this. See ya. This is again in a standard form. So you should, you should know this standard form. Okay, earlier we were dealing with 0 to infinity problem. 0 to infinity problem. Now this is a finite summation. So how to deal with finite summation? Through this equation. See, if alpha is not equal to 1, it is this. If alpha is equal to 1, how many times you are adding it? You are adding it n, n number of times. It is n plus 1 rather. This would be n plus 1. If it is 1, it would be n plus 1. Anyways, it is not 1. Leave it. Okay. So, this is what is the equation because alpha is not equal. It is not equal to 1. So, it would be 1 minus alpha is this. Okay. So, since it is upper limit is 5. So, it would be 5 plus 1. So, it is six this is how the dtft has to be formed up. these are all quite simple problems okay so you you need to be good with these summations if it is finite summation what if it is infinite if it is infinite summation if it is zero to infinity is one by one minus e power minus j omega okay but since this is finite summation this is the equation we should remember and since it is going from zero to n this should be n plus one okay so make that direction Fine. So with this, uh, I think we shall uh, stop this session. Fine. We will take more problems in the next session.